Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another amazing episode of Superhero Academy podcast. Um, I said that, and I'm like, wow, here I am saying that my podcast is amazing. That's a little self-masturbatory, but I, I guarantee you that this one is going to blow your mind. This one is an amazing episode. I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. So, <laughs> so today I dive deep with a friend from the land down under. He is an amazing entrepreneur uh, out of Australia who has created what I think to be one of the best online magazines that I've come across in a long time, uh, Founder Mag. And if you check out their website, all the links are in the description and all that stuff, you can really dive into some of the best content that I've ever seen for you know starting and budding entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs who are scaling their businesses, which basically means all entrepreneurs. And they've had amazing guests, amazing um, uh, articles. I've, I've learned so much from these articles, and that's saying a lot because I'm not really the type to consume a whole lot of content uh, when it comes to entrepreneurship specifically. I find it very dry and kind of uh, boring, um, but Founder Mag really revolutionizes that. I really actually learn. They actually have really well-written articles that aren't clickbait and, and aren't like just 700 words that basically lead to some, you know, backlink to some person's, uh, you know, online offering or something like that. So Nathan Chan, the founder of Founder Mag, uh, sits down with me. We, we have a great chat and we speak a little bit about also his success on Instagram because um, Founder Mag has... has just created a, a a program called Instagram Domination, but the reason they created that program is because they dominated on Instagram. They were able to amass an amazing number of followers, an amazing consistency on this platform, and get so much going through different techniques and different things. So obviously, we're going to talk a little bit about that, and again, the links for that are also in the description. So don't forget to rate, sus comment, subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions for Nathan or I, leave them in the comments, wherever, whatever platform you are on. We will make sure to answer them, and uh, I hope you enjoy the episode. Let me ask you a question. Do you believe anything is possible? Now let me ask you it differently. Do you believe you can achieve anything? Do you see a disconnect between these two statements, even for a moment? Let me tell you how I crossed that gap in one simple yet life-changing step. A few years ago, while hiking the Great Wall of China, I accomplished a dream of mine I had written down in an old journal some years back. Walking that wall felt like a giant check mark in the scattered list of amazing things I have always wanted to achieve in my lifetime. What I realized in that moment was that I had a huge list in my mind, but I had no true action plan to making it my reality. And then it hit me. The simple step to achieving my dreams was that I needed to make the list of my dreams a conscious reality. In that moment of clarity, I sat down and wrote what I now call the impossible list. What I wrote on the impossible list are the dreams I am committed to seeing through in my lifetime. What you write on your impossible list will be the accomplishments you're remembered for forever. Sometimes life feels like a journey, a race of sorts, but it's strange how many of us run the marathon of our lives without knowing where the finish line is, let alone where some of the checkpoints might be along the way. So the question is, what do you want to see come to life in your journey. I'm challenging you to take the initiative to see your deepest passions come true. So what impossible challenges will you tackle and make your reality? Hello. So we are here with Nathan Chan from Founder Magazine. Thank you so much, Nathan, for being a part of the podcast today. Thank you so much for having me, Mark. It's a pleasure to be here, my man. Yeah, well, I mean, man, I gotta say, the rise of Founder Mag has just been enormously inspiring. I, I discovered Founder Mag uh, not very long ago, and I just kind of started seeing the issues, and I started to see uh, some of your, your activity on Instagram. 
and kind of seeing how you are growing this page over the last little while and I was just blown away. I mean, I, and then I started diving into your story and man, I, I think, I don't think I've ever seen a magazine and an Instagram page and just somebody blow up and tap into something so quickly and have such an amazing rise. But I would love to hear um, what that was like on your side of the story. So how about we dive in and, and um, what do you, why don't you tell me your story, Nathan? Yeah, sure thing, man. And and uh, thank you for the kind words. I, uh, it's funny, you know, it's funny that the way you see it, uh, like we just like, you, you think we just blew up. But man, I've been beating on my craft for like, two and a half years running the magazine uh, and it feels like we haven't been growing fast enough. Like I think we could have grown like 10 times faster, dude, if I knew what I knew now, you know? So it's funny. Um, But thank you. Thank you for the kind words. So long story short, uh, you know, I started Founder March 5th, 2013 while I was working my day job and uh, what I was trying to do with it, and, and, and still to this day, is is just show people what it takes to become a successful entrepreneur, uh, especially for the eyes of somebody that's uh, you know found like never really started a business before, uh, on the trenches with everyone else. And I, I also identified the fact that there wasn't really a magazine in the space uh, servicing aspiring and novice stage entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a lot of these business magazines, they are. Uh, you know they can be quite intimidating, mm-hmm. and they're difficult to relate to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a majority of people right now, because there's this huge wave of people starting businesses right now, I really wanted to to really drive that and uh, be at the forefront of that. Mm-hmm. So, essentially, yeah, I started Founder while I was working my full time job. It's it's a monthly magazine uh, on the App Store and Google Play Store. Uh, we've been lucky enough to. Even you interview some of the most successful entrepreneurs around the world, like Richard Branson, Tony Robbins, Seth Godin, Tim Ferriss. Uh, the list goes on, and I've just kind of been chipping away, uh, just trying to get as many high quality interviews as we can. And and we start off as a magazine. Now we, uh, I guess, a multifaceted platform across a podcast, a, a high traffic website, high traffic social channels. And also, we're moving into uh, online education as well in terms of video courses. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's us in a roundabout way. But I think just from the other side of the the coin or the table, uh, I just want to be really clear. Like, dude, probably like this time last year, no one had asked me to come on a podcast. (laughs) Like, Like, I'd never been asked. And today, I've done maybe five interviews mm-hmm. with five different people for five different podcasts mm-hmm. to be on their show. So, uh, yeah, it's taken a while, man. It does. It does. And, and I love that you're, you're, you recognize that number one, as an entrepreneur, you always want to go faster, right? It, there's mm. always more to do. No matter how much you accomplish, no matter how much you achieve, you always say, oh, we could have done better. And, and I recognize that within myself at times, right? Like there's times where, um, you know, this website that we're running gets up to like 10,000 hits a day. And I'm like, wow, like, I, you know, when I first started that, that would have blown my mind that we would have had 10,000 people visit our website in a day. And now today mm. I'm like, yeah, that's normal. Like other people, you know, other websites are doing better. <laughs> and it's so funny that we have this mentality that is just constantly asking for more. And I think it's a very uh, classic entrepreneur mindset. Um, but as you said, I mean, nonetheless, in last year, nobody had asked you to do a podcast, right? So your climb into the space of being evil, even able to reach Tony Robbins and Richard Branson and have these people be interested in, in being a part of your magazine and doing this kind of stuff. I mean, clearly, dude, you did something right. Clearly, you stepped into a space that, that people were asking for. And I think it makes a lot of sense that you know, you're saying, well, you know, uh, some of these entrepreneur magazines and stuff were very intimidating, right? And I'm assuming that's also based on something you felt, right? I'm assuming that you kind of identified that need because you starting out as an entrepreneur before you even had the idea of, of Founder Mag and before you even started this out, I'm assuming that you had like, you know, tell me your story before um, kind of this all kicked off. Like, were you, you know, in school or were, were you going down some path that you, you weren't in, excited about? Like what led to you discovering 
Founder Mac, what led you to discovering essentially what is now, I would say, your genius and your superpower? Oh, well, thank you. Uh, well, what happened was, Mark, I, you know, I, I never really achieved much in life, hey? Like, I, I never really got very good grades in school, uh, in, in high school, uh, so your college. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I only just scraped by and... I think, you know, I never really, like, excelled and, and found something where I was like, yeah, you know, this is what I was born to do. This is what I'm really good at, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I scraped it by, got into, like, a, an average kind of uh, university degree and uh, ended up doing this job that I just utterly hated working in IT. Mm. And I just, just grinded it out for like a few years man and and then I went I went, I went away to Europe and did some soul searching and <laughs> I remember when I came back uh, went, traveled around Europe for a couple of months and I, and I when I came back I was like yeah no nah, I can't be doing this shit anymore this is bullshit I, I don't want to do this anymore <laughs> and uh, I went back to uni because I always was like oh you know I I, I always enjoyed marketing. I really, really enjoyed marketing, and uh, I was just like, okay, well, maybe I'll just go back to university and do a marketing degree. Maybe I should get a marketing job. That's something I, I, I want to do work I enjoy. You know, uh, that that was that was that was that was how it all started. I just wanted to do work I enjoyed because mm -hmm. I think you know when you read, especially when you read books. I was reading books like you know Tim Ferriss's Four Hour Work Week mm -hmm. or Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, and you know, when you read books like that, that certainly plants ideas in your mind. You don't even have to to, to work for someone else, mm -hmm. and and you want to be a a producer and, and a creator mm -hmm. uh, of of your own, I guess, assets. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it just kind of led me down this path. And then, you know, I I just got so frustrated with the work I was doing. I, I ended up finishing my marketing degree, couldn't get a job. No one would hire me. Mm. I had just so much hunger and hustle and passion about just doing marketing, but no one would even give me a go. Hmm. And at the same time, uh, I was like, you know, thinking about doing my own thing as well. And I just kind of just launched the magazine and, and just said to myself, okay, I'm going to launch it while I'm working my full-time job <laughs> and, and just see where it ends up. And within about 12 months of launching the magazine, I, I built it up to, to replace my income and, oper and cover the operating costs of the business. And uh, from there, I just kind of just keep uh, – to this day, I'm just constantly building on it and just uh, – just yeah, build you know brick by brick building yeah. that house day by day. Yeah, I know for sure. Yeah. That's it. I mean, it sounds like a classic hero's journey, right? Uh, confusion, yeah. leaving of the of the kind of your your current environment, going to Europe and and finding kind of this finding essentially the courage to say, hey, if I can survive Europe, like if I could go backpacking and be somewhere else in the world where I know no one and I know nothing then why can't I navigate this in my mind? Why can't I navigate this in my career and in my life? And, you know, I, I, you know, I share that kind of, uh, that similar story, right? And said, for me, it's funny, I actually ended up going to Australia <laughs> because, you know, <laughs> being here from Montreal, I ended up going to Australia. Uh, and from there, I also went to China. And I recognized the power of story. I recognized the power of communication without words, right? Like the mm. ability to communicate in context allowed me to understand that, there was, and then, you know, there was more than just words to communication that um, even just the color of my skin or what I looked like told a story to people and it told the story that people wanted to hear to some degree, particularly in China. And so um, I find it fascinating to hear that it seems like every single founder, every single entrepreneur out there um, has started with some level of uh, of a down. There was almost like, it's almost like there was this rock bottom I don't want to say rock rock bottom but it, sometimes it's just like this this feeling of inadequacy this feeling mm. that what they were doing wasn't really going to lead them to where they wanted to go and they knew that and I think the the real genius of all of this comes when people find the courage to step up 
and say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to try something. I'm going to start. And so many people out there who are listening to this podcast, you know, are listening to you and, and you know, maybe at this point they're searching on your website and they, they went to go see how big your Instagram is and your following is and all these things. And it's like, whoa, like how did, how did he do it? And I know that the first step was in, in starting and, and picking an audience and creating really high quality content. Or right, that's what it seems to be the answer to me. But what would you say the first step was for you to start for getting up and running and going? And, and how can people kind of follow suit? Like, you know, I know you give this class on Instagram and, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, what can people do who are listening to start on their path and on their idea? You know what, man? I reckon the best way you can do it is back yourself. When I when I started Founder, you know, to start off as a magazine, that's all I focused on for a very long time, at least a good year before we even had a decent looking website. Our mm-hmm. website for the first year was just a basic shitty landing page. <laughs> and, and I think you just got to back yourself in the sense that when I started Founder, I just focused on the magazine and I dropped 2K on my credit card didn't have any money at the time and I made myself financially accountable mm. and I think if you put like especially if you don't have much money and you put yourself on the line like um, there's this awesome this is awesome awesome website you can go to I think it's called slack but it's with two K's okay and it's like you can set like goals or wages against mm-hmm. your against yourself. So like you say, you could you link it up to your credit card and you put two thousand dollars on it, and then you you nominate a friend and you tell that friend that if you don't get this certain thing done, then then uh, that friend's going to get the money, and then that oh, Slack wow. company will take a little piece of that puzzle. Like I think making yourself financially accountable, just backing yourself uh, to the point where you stack the odds in your favor. Like who's going to want to give away $2,000 to their friend? You just have to get it done. Uh, that, that's how I, that's how I, that was like the first starting point for me, man, was just backing myself. Amazing. Not even necessarily believing in myself, uh-huh. but just backing myself, just saying, you know what, enough is enough. I'm going to purchase this software and then I'm not going to throw the money down the toilet because who likes to waste money like that? Mm-hmm. And especially when you don't have any. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, just made it work, man. That's that's brilliant. I think that's such a great idea to you know uh, with my coach now, and I say I say that because I want people to know that uh, I also think mentorship and coaching is a really great idea. And I'm assuming uh, you have a mentor and coach and some people that you consult in your uh, in your life too. Uh, and I'll ask you that in a second, but. With with my coach now, there's moments where sometimes I'm slacking, right? Uh, ironically, and sometimes I'm like I'm putting things off. I'm putting things further and further and further down the calendar, and the list item is going from one week to the next week to the next week. And over time, eventually, you know, it's eating at me. And over time, eventually, it, there's something that is kind of eating at my core. And I'm I'm assuming that in many cases, um, some of you listeners are are feeling the same way. You're in a position where you're like, man, I really want to do this. I really want to do this. And you're like, but I don't have the money or I don't know how, right? And there's so many people that don't know how. And then there's so many people like you who have gone down the path and not only found people who know how, and I'm assuming, you know, you've definitely, uh, you know, worked with other people and can kind of consulted with other people before, but now you also know how and now you teach how. And I find it ironic that so many people are, are caught up in not knowing how, not knowing where to start and how to do things, right? And I think the reality is, is you're never going to know. Nobody knows what it's going to take to, you know, to sail between Canada and Australia exactly. We, we can have a map. We can have the GPS coordinates of where, where we are and where we need to go. But nobody's going to know what the seas are like. Nobody's going to know what the winds are going to be like. Nobody is going to know what storm you're going to encounter. And the reality is that to sail from Canada to Australia, you need to adjust the course constantly. And I mean, I can only imagine in your path, Nathan, that you must have had to adjust the course constantly. I mean, look, you said you, you launched Founder with the, you know, or the magazine with this shitty landing page, and now you guys have a beautiful website at this point. So... 
as you know, the first iteration of your, of your expression is never the final iteration of your expression. You know, if we had to judge every single painter by the first five or 10 uh, brush strokes that they were, you know, that they put on the canvas, we would all think that they suck, right? Mm -hmm. But the reality is that the painting, just like your business, just like your idea, flourishes over time and through, uh, over iteration. So what does that look like for you? I mean, what is it, you know, who did you turn to to learn some of the how? Who, you know, who have been some of your mentors and guides? Because I believe every superhero has them. Yeah, I've had heaps, man, and still to this day have heaps. I'm very lucky that uh, just through through the work that I do that I'm able to connect with some brilliant minds and I learn every single person that I speak to, I learn, right? And I think that has, has definitely helped me accelerate the growth of the business big time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think one thing, one thing that I'm good at is is I find people that are crushing it with something like a certain area of business, mm -hmm. whether that's marketing, whether that's finance, whether that's uh, web design, whether that's SEO, whether that's social, whether that's product, you name it, and I learn from them and they tell me what works and I just go out and do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I, I have so many mentors. I have so many people that I can call to for help that I am constantly going up and back with for certain things when I have certain problems, have certain uh, challenges that I'm dealing with with the business. Uh, you know, wh what's the next step? What should I do this? And and I go around to every single one of those people and, and you know, I might ask 10 people and then, I, and then I find a general consensus for what I should do next. Uh, and I, I'm constantly doing that. I, I think um, you got it on point where you said that, uh, you know, your first iteration uh, is, is always going to look different and you're always going to keep painting as an artist. And, and I think entrepreneurs are, are the, the artists of, of today, you know, mm -hmm. in the sense that you, you have a blank canvas and, and you can put whatever you want on that canvas and, and it really never, it's never finished. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of like with Founder, you know, we said, I said we launched a shitty landing page, but Dude, the, you know, you talked about the kind of people we feature now on, on the magazine and the podcast, but have a look at the first issue of the magazine. There's no hiding there. We didn't even have a, a real person on the front cover. <laughs> we had a, a stock image. Yeah, of, I saw of, that. Uh, yeah, so, so this is the thing, right? Like you just got to start from somewhere and I'm super embarrassed uh, by that first issue, I'm mean, super embarrassed by a lot of our earlier issues. Um, you'll you'll probably find a ton of typos in there too, mm. <laughs> and and that's the thing, right? Like uh, Reed Hoffman, amazing amazing entrepreneur, one of the founders of LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, a favorite quote of mine is, "If you're not embarrassed by the first version of your product, you've launched too late." <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that's great. That's, that's so good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, you know, that's a question you need to ask yourself, like, especially when it comes to shipping. You know, Seth Godin talks a lot about shipping. Mm -hmm. We're very, very big uh, on shipping at Founder. And uh, we don't ship crap. We ship stuff we're proud of. Mm -hmm. But uh, I try and always move as fast as possible, and I'm always acting with urgency. Absolutely. I, I, I love that. That quote is, is on point. I mean, if you're, if you're trying to launch perfection, it's because you waited too long and you missed, and in my opinion, you will have missed many of the lessons that come with being embarrassed, quote unquote, even though nobody else is thinking it. It's, it's ironic, right? Like we, we put so much pressure on ourselves. I don't think other people are coming up to you and being like, oh my God, that's so embarrassing that you use a stock photo. I mean, I noticed it because I've, I've, and I noticed it, and you know why I noticed it? Because I use and I, I find, um, you know, that ex I took that exact same stock photo, and when I launched my first ever webinar, that was a stock photo that I used to promote it. And I kind of put words on it, too. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, and I had like 600 signups, and I was like, whoa, I was freaking out. And, and I had never done a webinar, right? And, and yet and now here I am, and I teach a class for a living using webinars. So it sounds mm. crazy, but... You know, when you first do something, you're going to be learning the ropes. And 
Um, you know, I run something known as the Valhalla Movement Foundation, which is looking to make sustainability mainstream. Of course, some you know, you listeners definitely know this. Um, but I also run something called Superhero Academy, which is this online school for social entrepreneurs. And so in my heart, there, um, you know, there's this big space carved out, not only for sustainability, which to me means long-term thinking, but also social entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurs who are doing things to better the world and doing things for a cause. And um, I wanted to hear a little bit about what you think, you know, the impact of social entrepreneurs are going to have on this planet going forward. And, you know, what do you, you know, how do you feel about this? Like, how do you feel about things like climate change and the challenges of our society now? And how do you feel that entrepreneurs are going to be best equipped to kind of deal with some of this stuff? Because I think we are modern day superheroes kind of waiting to put our capes on kind of thing. Mm, yeah, I agree. This this social entrepreneurship thing uh, is something that's taken like a while for me to get my head around, to be honest, Mark, in the sense that for a long time I always thought to become a social or to be a social entrepreneur, you you can't be a for-profit business. Mm. And that's, um, that's something that, to be honest, if somebody said the word social entrepreneur, I'd be a little bit <coughs> embarrassed because <laughs> – we're we're pretty capitalist at founder, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're we're looking to build a sustainable business model. Mm-hmm. However, um, I think that more than ever, uh, social entrepreneurialism is is needed, and I think more than ever, uh, you it, it seems to be a, a trend that 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 I've noticed ever since I've started founder. More and more people are. I, uh, are social entrepreneurs and there's all sorts of things happening in this space. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, question, the question needs to be, I think, you know, how, how long is it going to take until, you know, people actually want, like there's a lot of people that do want to make a difference, but how long is it going to take for the actual world to know that there's things that need to change? And, mm. and, that, and that's, that's the struggle. Like you look at like Elon Musk. Yeah, uh, he's one of my all-time favorite entrepreneurs. He's a social entrepreneur, right? Ab- like what? To me, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. 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 You know, yeah, that's right. But you know, what would have you considered him a social entrepreneur when he was starting out PayPal? I guess at the time, no, only because we don't know the story of that, right? Mm, that's right. But I think a, a big thing, a, a big thing that I've found is is a lot of entrepreneurs that uh, they go full circle and they give back and like mm-hmm. the hero's journey as you mm-hmm. described, and mm-hmm. and I think a big part of that giving back is is doing you know uh, NFP type stuff and and really focusing on on creating things that make a serious difference in the world and 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 trying to tackle. Uh, serious problems around climate change and the environment and and the world we live in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think it's so, very interesting yeah. that you said that, right? That you mentioned basically that I think that social entrepreneurs who were running a capitalistic business didn't make sense. And yet, if you look at Tesla, if you look at um, Elon Musk, all the businesses he's running are still, you know, well financed and and kind of capitalistic style businesses. Yet he's going after industries and disrupting technologies that need disrupting and that the world kind of needs to see happen, right? So it, it mm. seems like, you know, what what we're having, and I think I think a lot of people have gone through this in their life, is some level of aversion to money, right? There's, there's some level of like, when it comes to this social mindset, and I want to say the quote unquote free spirited people or if, you know, <laughs> less, yeah. eloquent, less eloquently, the hippies, right? There are many, many hippies that say, wow, well, you know, the problem is capitalism because that's what got us here in the first place. And I, I don't know if I can equate that capitalism got us here in the first place. Humans got us here in the first place. And our own self-interest got us here in the first place at times. And really, mm-hmm. it's, it's a tragedy of the commons, right? What's good for me is not necessarily good for everyone. So it's good for me to have a nice, big, beautiful home, you know, and, and have like kind of, you know, abundance in all, sets, in all senses. But sometimes that's taking away from somebody else around the world, let's say. And... It's interesting to see this new hybrid model, and I want to call it like the B Corp, right? The, the benefit corporation that not only measures how much dollars and cents the company is earning and making and you know, how financially sustainable it is, but it also tracks other targets, right? So it might tar- track like carbon sequestration, it might track the relief of poverty, it might track how effective they are, are essentially achieving these social missions. 
And I think, as you said, there are more and more and more and more social entrepreneurs entering the space and finding their ground and their footing. And so, you know, I, I want to dispel the fact that like, hey, being a social entrepreneur does not need to mean uh, that you have to run a non for profit and it doesn't need to mean that you have to be broke either. It doesn't mean to mean that you can't make millions and be and be in a position where you are you're earning a great living, you know, and I, I guess, um, you know, part of part of what I'm doing here is I'm proving it right. It's like I can earn a great living. I can work a couple of days a week and make all the money that I need to, to live and I can invest that money into projects and things that really promote sustainability. And so, um, yeah, I mean, uh, very interesting to hear that. I, I, I'm glad to hear that and glad to see that you're noticing this shift even from uh, the land down under that there's a lot of social entrepreneurism that's kind of stepping into the foreground at this point. Yeah, for me and how we can give back is is what we do as founders, we essentially promote entrepreneurship. We've done like a whole like issue around change makers and, and promoting social entrepreneurship and and I think what we can do is is create that ripple effect, man. Like across across our assets, uh, we collectively reach a million people now. Mm-hmm. And um, what's really cool is is we're promoting entrepreneurship. We're trying to uh, show people what's possible, and you know, encourage people that there's another another thing that you can do. You don't have to do what you're told. You don't have to work a nine to five job. You you you, you know your whole life isn't mapped out for you. Mm-hmm. And the internet has changed the game. Uh, and I think what's really cool is for us to be able to instill that thought into someone's mind and then for that person to spread that thought and have that ripple effect. And that's uh that's how you cause change, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, uh, I want to kind of end on that note with with you talking a little bit about um, how you were able to reach those million people. I know it's one of your one of your classes now that you teach on, on Instagram, and I think it's one of the the realms that you tapped into something that is just ever growing. And actually, uh, founder Mag, when I discovered you on Instagram, just kind of flowing through my feed, I, I think I had like I don't know like a couple hundred followers, and then I took one of your free classes, and I started learning, and I started just recognizing, oh shit. This is like this is the platform. This platform is really, really powerful, and mm. I think you are at the point now. I, I would say you're one of the best in the world at this point um, in creating content on that platform. It seems like you created a community, and I can almost guess who's in your community at this point because I could see almost like the people who have taken your class because I, I almost see everyone kind of following your footsteps, or maybe you're following theirs. Uh, I have no idea, but the the idea is um, I would love to hear a little bit more about how you tangibly did that, you know what I mean? Like, how did you start, how did you tap into this, that resource and, and where can people learn more information about how they can learn about Instagram and how they can learn how to, you know, do things like reach out to these amazing, um, you know, entrepreneurs at these higher levels. I know you guys did a really great article on that recently and stuff. Um, you know, talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. So, um, the really cool thing about Instagram is, it allows like like in terms of in terms of not paying for traffic it's one of the best sources of free traffic i've ever found and mm. it's because the engagement is so extremely powerful uh it's like 50 times higher than twitter or facebook mm-hmm. uh and it, and the thing is it won't always be that way so it's just this massive platform they have like 400 million active users and i think 70 million use use the platform every day at least or something ridiculous wow. around that. And and so you've got this massive platform of, you know, anywhere between the ages of 10 or 8 all the way up to, you know, 50 or 60. But predominantly it's a younger, younger demographic. <laughs> but what, what I'm trying to say is essentially you've got this massive platform with tons of active users, millions, hundreds of millions of people that are active on this platform. And, you know, it's it, it just has this amazing uh, way to spread a message uh, because it is, uh, you know, so shareable. Mm-hmm. Like so many people so, – so think of it like this. If we post an image now on our Instagram account, we could get, like we have 400,000 people that follow us, we could get, you know, over 1,000 or 1,500 comments with mainly people 
tagging their friends, wow. like saying, you should follow this account, you should follow this account, follow this account, or I just want to let you know about this account. <laughs> and imagine if you did that that kind of stuff. Like imagine if you posted on that Instagram account uh, anywhere between four to ten times a day for a year straight and you posted just amazing content and you did that for a year straight every single day. It's amazing what can happen. And uh, that's essentially what we've done. We've just produced amazing content mm -hmm. that uh, really resonates with our target audience. So we know our target audience really well. Mm -hmm. And the content is very, very shareable, uh, can almost go viral to a certain point, uh, so to a certain extent. And then we've just kind of uh, facilitated that growth by um, the light, lighting a fire underneath it. And uh, yeah, we just do a lot of networking and and uh, yeah, that platform has just been an absolute beast, not only to grow our business, but to spread the word about our brand, to spread the word about entrepreneurship. And and uh, the way I worked it out was just same way as I as I do everything. Like I, like I mentioned at the start, man, is is when it comes to this mentorship stuff and networking, I just find people that are crushing it, learn from them, test, implement, rinse, repeat. Mm. Yeah, well, I can definitely say that from my experience and my view, you are crushing it in all senses of the word, Nathan. And uh, I really want to thank you. <laughs> thank you, bro. Yeah, I really want to thank you for uh, being a guest on this podcast. Um, and, you know, just pointing out there on that last statement, what you pointed out to me is doing it every day and doing it resonating with your audience. So, so those of you listening there, out there, you know, whatever you're doing, whatever you guys are going after, understand that the best way that you can achieve success is through the consistency of trying and iterating and you know putting down that brick day by day by day and and kind of building the foundation of what it is and to, you know to build this kind of sky rise that you you dream of one day to to change the world and to have a positive impact on on our planet but also knowing who you're going to invite into this into this kind of like this tower that you're looking to build, right? Understand the people who you are trying to attract. Why are you building this, you know, this church, if you will, right? Who is, who are the people who you are going to evangelize? Who are the people who are, you are going to bring into this mentality, bring into your, into your space and f have them really be empowered. And I think more than anything, a founder mag and, and just all the work that you're doing is inspiring people, it's motivating people, it's empowering people, and it's speaking to the people who you were targeting, um, and, you know, the people who were intimidated by these big magazines, and I think you're just doing a phenomenal job. So everyone out there, um, where can they find exactly, you know, more about your Instagram course? Where can they find more about Founder Mag? Where can they find more uh, about you? Yeah, well, well, thank you for the kind words, Mark. I'm blown away. You're very, very, very humbling. Uh, the best place you can find us is just go to foundermag.com. So it's F-O-U-N-D-R mag.com. And if you want to find out more about our Instagram course, I just recommend downloading our free ebook. Uh, great place to start. Uh, go to foundermag.com forward slash free. And uh, it's an in-depth in uh, ebook on uh, how to get your first 10,000 followers. Mm, I say I can tell from experience that it is a phenomenal ebook, and it definitely taught me something. Um, so thanks a lot again, Nathan, for being on the podcast. And all the links will be in the description below, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Every you know subscription, every like, every comment, all those different questions that you guys have for myself or for Nathan, leave them in the comments, and I'll make sure that Nathan and I see them and uh, we engage on them so that we kind of answer some of your questions. And until next time, continue being superheroes, ladies and gentlemen. Boom. Boom.